Hello, students. I'm going to try to give you some answers to the NMR uh, sample spectra packet. This is the blue packet. I'm just going to kind of go through and try to an uh, annotate uh, so you can check your work. We'll start with number five. Number five, we have these three right here. We'll call that group A. That, of course, is this one right here um, because uh, that peak's a lot bigger. Uh, also, it's between 3.4 and 4 which is on your chemical shift where you're going to find something that's next to an alcohol. And of course, we'll call this little group B here. That's only one hydrogen, so the peak is a little tiny. For number six, we have two groups of hydrogens. These three, uh, those are going to be further upfield. So we're going to call that group A here. Notice they have two neighbors. A has two neighbors, these two right here. So that's going to make a triplet. And these right here are going to be our B, right? Because further downfield, notice they're between three and four. B also has three neighbors, which makes it a quartet, right? So four different peaks. Number seven, here we have three carbons. So you might think that we're going to have three different uh, signals, but uh, on our spectrum, we only see two, this one and this one. And as it turns out, these two and those two are magnetically equivalent, right? By, by uh, symmetry, those are exactly the same as each other. So they're all gonna give rise to the same one signal. Uh, and where is that signal gonna be? Those hydrogen are near a chlorine. So yes, between three and four. So all four of those are right here. We'll call that signal A between three and four. All four of these jobbers have two neighbors. So two neighbors means that's gonna be split into a triplet. So check, it is a triplet. And check out the integration line on this sucker. It's that distance between here and here. That's pretty big compared to this. In fact, if you measure it, it's twice as big because there's four hydrogens making this signal and only two hydrogens making this signal, right? So this, these two are group B, right? The integration trace is smaller, check that out. The B hydrogens have one, two, three, four neighbors and four neighbors should give you a quintet. Right, that's five peaks that look like so. Also further upfield because no chlorine. Number eight, um, these are this right here. Oh, sorry, that one is this. Chlorine is more electronegative than iodine, so typically it appears further downfield. This one is this one, of course. That's the B group right here. Um, you'll notice that these heights are not exactly the same. Don't worry about that right now. That's an example of coupling. Sometimes when the signals are really close together, you get a little bit of distortion. We'll talk more about that later, but for right now, don't worry too much about that. It doesn't really uh, mean much for us. Four nine, all right. This one right here is gonna be our A group right here, right? If you have a hydrogen that's near two chlorines, it's gonna be shifted much further downfield than hydrogens that are only near one iodine. So these are our B group. So that B group is right here. Yay, hooray, and happy day. Notice also there's two hydrogens in the B group and the B signal is much bigger. We don't have an integration trace, but it's much bigger suggesting more hydrogens. 10, all of these are magnetically equivalent. Yay, so those are all the same as each other. Notice uh, between if they're near two chlorines, the chemical shift is way downfield near six. This one's a little hard to see, but check this out. This is a carboxylic acid, okay? And this is a peak on the spectrum and they overlap a little bit. This is actually the top of this peak right here. Um, so we have an acid and we have an alcohol. Um, those are pretty easy to find. Acids and alcohols always make singlets. So because the H is on an O, it never has neighbors. So it won't be a neighbor and it won't have neighbors. In other words, those will always be singlets. So the acid hydrogen, that carboxylic hydrogen is this one that has a very characteristic shift between 10 and a half and 12. This one over here, we'll call that B. That's this one right here. And then the question is, which one of these is which? Your table of chemical shifts can help you with this. Okay, what you'll find is that these, which I'll call C, if they're near an acid, it's typically between 2.6 and 3. So those are those right there. And these right here, 
we'll call that group D, right? Typically, if it's near an alcohol, it's between 3.4 and 4. So watch those. Make sure you didn't get C and D mixed up, okay? Your table of chemical ships can help you figure out which one is which. 412. Ooh, all righty. Well, that one is a singlet because it's an alcohol. We just talked about that. So that one's going to be A because that's the only singlet. Alcohols always appear as a singlet. This one, we'll call that B. It's way downfield and it has two neighbors. So that should be a triplet way downfield like this one. And then this, of course, we'll call that C. Remember, this does not count as a neighbor for these two. These two only have one neighbor, this one right here. And uh, it's going to be also uh, near an alcohol, but also there's some chlorines in the neighborhood that pushes it to here. 13. This one's, uh, let's see, a little funky, but I bet we can figure it out. Um, notice this molecule also has some symmetry. Um, let's look at this one right here. How many neighbors does that one have? We'll call that group A. Go one carbon over and count. So it has two here plus two more here. So it has four neighbors total. So that one we're gonna expect uh, a peak of five. And one, two, three, four, five. That's probably this one right here. Um, this one is a singlet and singlets are usually these guys, B, right? Check. And this, so this is our B. And then all of these are all magnetically equivalent. So these and these are both the same. This is C and this is the other part of C and that's here. Notice C only has one neighbor. This guy, A is the neighbor to C. So that's why it's split in two. You do see a little bit of coupling, which is why this isn't a beautiful doublet that's perfectly symmetrical. Um, but your integration traces really help you with this too, right? Check out this distance from here to here, from here to here. That distance is about the same as that distance and much smaller than this distance, right? And if you measure that distance with a ruler, you'll see it's about four times bigger than either this or this. 14. Oh, we have another carboxylic acid. I actually love carboxylic acids because they have a very characteristic um, chemical shift. It's always way above 10. So that hydrogen right there is going to be this one. That was easy. And then, wow. All right. Um, in, integration traces are going to help us with this one. So if you look at this, oops, sorry, this distance compared to this distance, we have a group of two hydrogens and a group of three hydrogens. So the group of three hydrogens, if we call that B, must be this one because the integration trace is bigger. And this one is a group of two hydrogens. So that's gonna be this one. Chemical shift can also help us. So B, notice is, is between three and a half and four. That's where you would find an ether and B is hydrogens near an ether. What's interesting about C is C is near an ether and it's also near that carboxylic acid. So it's actually going to be further downfield than the ether alone. So that's why C appears here, because not only is it near that same ether, it's also near the carboxylic acid. Let's look at this puppy. This is just a little artifact of the software. So that's just supposed to be a CH3. There's nothing magical about that one. So there's that group, and there's this group, and there's this group. Weirdly, we have three groups of hydrogens, but there's only two signals, right? So that's telling me that something hokey is happening. There's this and then there's this. Also check this out. Remember all of those multiplets are supposed to go small, big, big, small, right? They're supposed to make like a mountain. And this one goes small, big, big, even bigger. <coughs> so what's happening here is one signal is literally on top of the other one. Remember for an alcohol, we're expecting a singlet, one lone peak. And where do I see one lone peak? You don't, except maybe it's possibly this right here. And if we took this away, we would have a nice, maybe quartet, small, big, big, small, right? So this is a case where A and this other one, B, just happened to coincidentally have the same lawnmower frequency and they just appeared on top of each other. Um, so you see that sometimes. We know that B is the quartet because B has three neighbors, one, two, three, making it a quartet. Remember that does not count as a neighbor. So this has three neighbors making it a quartet. Yay, hooray, and happy day. This one, CH3, it's located way away from the functional groups. It has two neighbors, so way away from the functional groups means the chemical shift is around one. 
and two neighbors means it's a triplet. Almost done. Ooh, all right. Let's look at this puppy right here. First of all, here's a benzene ring. A benzene ring is going to appear as an arene on your table of chemical shifts. And the arene uh, shift is always somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, six to eight and a half. So usually somewhere between um, seven and eight. So all of these hydrogens, they're not exactly magnetically equivalent, but they're close. So sometimes if you see like in this structure, you'll just see a single peak. Sometimes you'll actually see kind of a real messy multiplet right here around um, seven. In any case, a chemical shift of seven is really unusual. Does that say C? Where did that come from? I don't know. Forget that. Uh, so all of these are A right here. Um, and notice, check out the integration on that one. You can see that distance is really big. It should correspond to five carbons. These are each small. We're going to have to use our table of chemical shifts to help us with this one, right? So if we look up amino, amino says between one and five. That's not very helpful. Um, oh, oh, but I also see there's something called benzylic, right? Check out and see if you can find benzylic. Benzylic is actually this right here. On your table of chemical shifts, it's adjacent to that. Benzylic says 2.2 to 3. So here's 2.2 to 3. Notice there's nothing between 2.2 and 3. But not only are these two benzylic, but they're also near this amine group. And remember, if it's near two uh, functional groups, typically it's additive or cumulative. So this group, right, it's going to shift it further downfield towards bigger numbers. So that's probably this. And then these are those aminos. They're not very helpful. These are C. We'll call this C. Um, again, because of the because these are protic hydrogens, like the alcohols and the acids, they don't count as neighbors. So just think about oxygens and nitrogens as sort of being a barrier to neighbors. It's a little more complicated than that, but they don't they won't show splitting. All right, let's look at this puppy. All righty row. These are pretty easy because I see something between three and four. Oh, our good buddy between three and four, probably on a chlorine. So there's that. Then if you look to see how many groups are left, there's these, but those are actually the same as those. So those two methyls are symmetrically placed, and so they're going to be magnetically equivalent, and they all have one neighbor. So a whole bunch of hydrogens with one neighbor is going to look like this. A whole bunch of hydrogens means the integration trace is going to be long, and one neighbor means it's going to be split in a doublet. My doublet isn't super symmetrical here, but it's pretty close. And then this little lonesome one, oops, why is this not working, is C. That would be this one right here. Notice tiny little signal. Tiny little signal means only one hydrogen. And it, how many neighbors does it have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, seven, eight. So theoretically, if you could see them all, let's see, eight neighbors plus one is nine. There should be nine. And I'm getting like one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see six for sure, <coughs> but also... Notice that they seem to sort of like disappear into the nothingness so that there's more here that we actually can't see. So these babies are that one. And of course that one was A. Anytime you see something like this, which is, this is a really characteristic signal. It's a teeny tiny little signal, only one hydrogen, and it's split into a bazillion gajillion pieces. That's oftentimes indicative of a tertiary hydrogen, right? A hydrogen that's on a carbon that's attached to three other carbons. And that's how you get both only one hydrogen, little teeny signal, and also a zillion, billion, gajillion neighbors, right? As, so this oftentimes means it's a hydrogen on a tertiary carbon. Here you see that same thing, right? Little teeny signal split into a zillion. That's this one. Theoretically, if you could count them all, we have nine neighbors. So this should be 10 peaks. You won't even see them all, right? There's too many to actually count. Um, and all the rest of these are all magnetically equivalent. The other nine are these. And if you look at the integration trace, this should be nine times bigger or nine times taller than that. All of these Bs only have one neighbor. They're not neighbors to each other because they're actually two carbons away, but they are neighbors to this one. So... Here we're going to get a little bit of um, funkiness too. 
uh, and, and you'll see some little uh, features on this that we'll talk more about this uh, later. But in general, right, these are a signal and then those are a signal too, right? Uh, these, the ones I circled are all A and that would be this. And you notice that they are have a doublet because they have one neighbor right here. And this over here, if you look at your table of chemical shifts, um, that is going to be uh, adjacent to a C double C. Is that right? Um, oh, no. Uh, here we go. Uh, acetylenic. Oh, no, sorry. Vanillic. Sorry. I was like, what? It's uh, vanillic, right? It's the H on a C double C, which is between 4.6 and about 6. And that's what we have here. So these puppies are these. So, so these are both B and that's this one. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong place on my table. All right, you'll notice that there's some funky features here, like there's some tip splitting here. We'll talk about tip splitting next week. Last but not least, oh my goodness. All of these are magnetically equivalent. So there's only one signal. There's no neighbors. That one is the one that is acetylenic um, between two and three. So that one is this one right here. I hope this was helpful. I'll talk to you soon.